Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about a duality of Bluebeam Review that involves the comparison and overlay tools and how the mnemonic compare where, overlay what, allows us to understand how these two tools work really well together, hand in hand. The first duality that I want to discuss is one of my favorites. It's a little acronym that I've been using during training for many, many years, and of course in my tutorial for the comparison and overlay tools. I'm going to quickly demonstrate them now, not in immense detail, but I'm going to demonstrate why we use the following acronym, compare where, overlay what. So I'm going to go to my thumbnails list right here. Actually, file access is what I meant to say because here I have my two files prepared. We're going to simulate what it's like to compare to an old set of plans with a new set of plans. Usually we can do this with multiple pages. I'm just going to be doing it with a single page for brevity's sake. So I'm going to open up both files right here. And so they are basically the same page. They're the A2.2 file, or the A2 file, excuse me. And one of them was made a year prior, and the other one is much more recent. Obviously, this is kind of fabricated. We're just doing this as an example. So we're going to look at these files here, and obviously from the get-go, if we switch between them, it's very hard to tell if anything really changed. What I can see in the newer version is that I can see some color on the upper right side, so it looks like there may be some kinds of markups there, maybe something else that was created, so we're about to find out. So whenever we use the comparison tool, which should be the first tool that we use in this instance, we need to make sure that the old file is the first one in this list of files up here. So if you have another file, such as the example floor plan, that is essentially the floor plan that we just saw and that we're going to be using for comparison, but with a bunch of markups and other tests and things, then basically we can either have this as our third file or just close it all together, which I'm going to do right now. Now we have the old file from 2023, and then the new one in 2024 is the second one in the list. This is important in order to save time and allow review to automatically detect these two files with the comparison tool. So now we're going to initiate the tool. The long way of initiating it is by going to the document dropdown and clicking on compare documents. And we can see the icon is an A and B symbol right here. So I've actually got that as one of my shortcuts right here on the upper right side. So I'm just going to click on it. And I'm not going to go through every single detail today about the comparison tool. I've made a very thorough tutorial on this. You guys can check out our other tutorials and just search for it. If you type in the word compare in our little search box, you should be able to find it. So like I mentioned, the old file is now detected automatically. We can actually click on the drop down and confirm that document A is the 2023 file and document B is the 2024 file. So this is wonderful. This is going to make sure that we're comparing the files in the right order because we have certain settings that are going to treat document A and document B differently. Now, in my case, I don't need to use manual alignment. The actual building has not shifted its location, so I don't need to pick three similar points on both drawings in order to align whatever I want to keep the same in one place and then compare the inside of the building. In this case, I don't need that, but you guys can look at my tutorial for how pick points really works. We're going to split our screen after the comparison is done. I'm going to briefly show you all my settings here. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because once again, I've already made a tutorial on this, but we can see here that we've set our DPI here to a higher number. We're including markups and flattened markups, and I've made some color preference changes. And the reason why document A and document B being the old and the new one is important is because our comparison is going to create a new copy of document B. This can be changed, of course. We have several different kinds of options here, but I prefer to do it this way, and this is the default way that comparisons are done. So usually the newer file is used as the basis for the comparison, showing how things in the newer file are a bit different from the older file. And of course, the file name will be the same as document B's name with underscore diff at the end to differentiate it. So I think we're ready to go. One little detail is I leave locked unchecked, so we don't really need to lock our cloud markups. So I leave that unchecked. I'm going to click OK, and then we can choose that comparison type right here. We can make many different kinds. So I have quite a few, including ones that I've made for clients. So I think this one's going to be great. We're going to click OK. The comparison tool is created. I could have done this a lot faster, but of course I'm explaining myself. And we can see that it basically moves the comparison to the left side, and it moves the old file to the right. That way, by itself, we can use the comparison and just look at it and see where things changed. 
So compare where is now initiated. And so we can very clearly see all of these very easy to spot revision clouds in different spots of the document. And this is great because we can just immediately navigate to them, stare at the revision clouds on one side, and then look at the old one on the right side, and we can kind of see what changed. There are some obvious changes. So the bottom right side is very easy to see that we have some new text here instead of the old text here. Looks like a number here is different, and it looks like there used to be the level 02 um, title right here for the entire drawing. But it's all been removed in the new version because this is a copy of the 2024 version right here. You can also look at its name right here. So that can help you out. So that's very good. But compare where is basically half of the coin. This is where we need an overlay to really confirm what exactly changed. And as I stated in my previous comparison video and overlay video, it's actually kind of hard to really look and see what exactly changed in some instances. The offices right here, this office and this copy room are a prime example. So what exactly changed here? Well, we'll never really know unless we actually do some manual measuring or we use the overlay tool because now compare where and soon overlay what? Overlay is like our brain and the comparison is like our eyes and our eyes and our brain are actually connected to each other. But right now, there is a disjoint. We don't have our brain turned on right now. Let's turn that on right now. Let's initiate the overlay, but not quite yet. We still want to rearrange our files in the same way that we did for the comparison. So I'm literally going to activate the old A2 file. We're going to click and hold and drag it to the left side. You'll see small white dots will appear near the upper left corners and upper right corners of the other files here, depending on where I move my mouse, of course. So I'm going to move it right here very carefully. If you move it too close to the left or if you move it to the center of your screen, it can either basically become a floating window, so you just want to be careful with that. Although that is kind of nice. I can actually simulate that right now. And there we go. I've actually got it separated from everything as a floating window, which I can now put on my other monitor. So it's actually partially on my right monitor right now. <laughs> so let's put that back and let's do this. So we have our old file, then our new file. We're going to leave the comparison open this time. It's not really going to interfere with the overlay because I believe that review is going to detect the name here, the underscore diff portion, and not include it. That's typically happened in all of my tests. Let's prove that theory right now. We can go to the document dropdown and click on overlay pages. Let's look at the icon here. It looks like a couple of pages stacked on top of each other with kind of like this H or like a chair, kind of like a backwards H. So I'm actually just going to find the same icon right here in the upper right side next to where I initiated the comparison. So I'm going to click on that. And there it is. It does not include the comparison file, which is fantastic. We just have our two files that we now want to overlay because now it's time to turn on our brains. So the reason why, once again, we want our files in the right order is because it's going to automatically put them in the right order in the overlay, and then it'll associate these colors with them. The red color is easy to replicate. We can actually double click on the file, and we can give it some extra settings. And this red color happens to be this default one right here, which is fantastic. There is some bad news about the green one, though. The green shade here is a beautiful shade of green. If we try to actually find this shade of green, you'll see that there's no color here that has like a little circle around it. So this shade of green and this shade of green are basically different from it. It's in between these two right here. As a result, it is actually quite nice to have this automated. And so we can actually find this shade of green by going to our edit default section. And here it is. So it comes by default in the box when you install Bluebeam Review for the first time. And basically, it's kind of hard to replicate. So we do want to leave that shade of green. It is a direct complement to this red right here. And it comes out quite nice when we make our overlays. So we're going to click on Cancel right here because we don't really need to change any of our settings. We don't need to align points, just like the pick points in the comparison file. And we're ready to go. We basically had a glance at some of the settings here. But basically, with overlays, I leave almost all the settings defaulted. And the only thing that I may change in the default section is choosing which colors come next. If I wanted to overlay the version of this file in 2022 and perhaps also 2021, I mean, I can do it for about seven years and have completely different colors here. And there's even more that I can do. So I can actually add even more layers and compare so many different versions of the same file. Or should I say overlay different versions of the same file? So I'm going to cancel out of this. We're ready to rumble. We're going to click OK. 
The overlay now generates, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The problem with the overlay is that in some instances, it is hard to see the red and the green. Sometimes when the red and the green are very separate from each other and far away and large changes were made, such as right here where these offices are, it is quite easy to see this red and green here. But I would say that this green here is a bit subtle along with this one and that one. And so from a glance like this, the overlay by itself is kind of like using our brain but closing our eyes. It's a little bit hard to find the overlay, but it does definitely tell us what changed. So. We're now going to use the comparison overlay together and finally connect our eyes to our brain and really see why I love to use the acronym of compare where overlay what. So now I'm going to split my screen manually. On the bottom left side, I can split it vertically. My favorite way to do it is typically vertically. Horizontally doesn't really give us enough vertical space, as they say. So vertical is quite nice. What it does is, is whatever your active file you had, it duplicates that file on the right side. So we don't need the duplicate of the overlay. It's just a visual indicator. So I'm just going to close it. We have the overlay on the right. Now I'm going to activate the comparison right here. And there it is. Now we can see clearly now the rain is gone. And we can think clearly now. We're not having a foggy brain where we have to basically stare at this door for a while and say, oh, what really changed here exactly? Now the overlay says, oh, yes, a door was added. And of course, the wall was removed to fit the door. Perfect. And that's why this was noted as a change. Now, once again, that was quite obvious. We didn't really need the overlay for that one. But here is where the subtleties really start to show themselves. Because here we can really see how the office got bigger. It used to be a little bit smaller. It used to be where the red lines are. And now the green lines show how it got larger. Also, this label seems to have moved just a little bit. So this is fantastic. Now we know exactly what's going on here. This is wonderful. And that's what, this is really where the comparison and overlay working together shines quite brightly. And this is just one example of one of the many dualities of Bluebeam Review. Thanks very much for watching this video about the comparison and overlay tools and how we can remember how they work together by remembering the mnemonic compare where overlay what. We have many more dualities of Bluebeam Review that we're going to be showcasing in future videos, so I really hope you guys enjoy them. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. I hope you have a great rest of your day.